Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be controlling a RC car with a Xbox controller. Now, we're not going to be going over how to use a Raspberry Pi to control a servo or a DC motor, but I do have videos on that if you guys are interested in uh, learning more about that. I'm just going to be going over what I did with the car here. There's not too many changes. One thing is the kit that I ended up getting did not come with the servo, so that's something to keep in mind. It, the servo I did get is inside of the description if you are interested in that. And one thing I did do is I took the wires and, that I have right here and I ended up soldering them on right to the DC motor and I bought these connectors so I can easily connect them and disconnect them. And I soldered them on to the wires as well so I can easily disconnect and reconnect the DC motor. And I also got uh, this battery right down here and this is also going to be inside of the description. The kit that I got did not come with a battery either. And one more thing to keep in mind is that these shocks that I ended up getting did not come with the kit. And they're not necessary but I ended up putting them on there. And so one more thing to keep in mind. Now this is the actual board that I ended up putting together. Now this is just a fiberglass board that I ended up cutting to look like this. So fit right on top like a hat on top of the RC car. Now if you end up moving some stuff around, it, I think you can end up making this fit better. But this is how I ended up setting it up. And just a few things to tell you. The servo wire, the three wires actually comes through this hole and also the DC motor wire um that yeah, comes through this hole and the dc motor wire actually hooks up to this connector right here and i did solder this connector up here as well and the servo wires they actually hook onto this breadboard i have uh, some pins that i soldered onto this breadboard here and they just plug right into that so that's one thing to keep in mind and the battery comes through this hole and the wire for the battery and it actually hooks right up to this right here. Now this kind of looks like a mess right over here but the thing to keep in mind is the battery voltage I just wanted it to go to this buck converter right here this buck converter right here and I needed these two pins to also have that uh, like 7.2 to 8 volts of the battery voltage so <clears throat> it does look like a mess over here but that's one thing to keep in mind and this is the H-Bridge controller that I used inside of my video for how to control a DC motor with a uh, Xbox controller through a Raspberry Pi. So everything's going to be the same with this DC controller. And um, another thing, uh, these buck converters, if you're not sure what these are, they are like a transformer, uh, but uh, they're for DC. So in my case, these are just stepping down the battery voltage to something that I can use for the Raspberry Pi. You can see right here, this is actually where I get my five volts from, from the battery. And on the secondary side here, it actually hooks up to this rail. And that's also where the Raspberry Pi is connected. Yeah, so that's where it gets hit its power. And also the H-Bridge controller also gets its five volts uh, from this rail as well. So. Um, the main reason I ended up going with a second uh, buck converter is because I I wanted a different voltage than the battery voltage for my servo because it's only rated for up to like a 7.2 volts and I didn't want to end up pushing that with the 8 volts of the battery voltage. So that's why I'm actually having that the, this H-Bridge or excuse me, this um, buck converter right here, so I can actually get like that 7.2 volts uh, from the battery as well. Over here, uh, these are the pins that I'm actually using. You can see this one right here. This is actually to control the servo, this pin. And these two pins up here are both to control the DC motor. And everything I have on this board is actually using standoffs to just keep itself elevated from the actual breadboard or the fiberglass board I mean and one thing to keep in mind with these uh, buck converters to go back to these this little screw right on top of here you can actually spin that to change the output voltage on the secondary side over here so just something, something else to keep in mind the next thing we're going to be going over is UDEV rolls and we are going to be creating a UDEV roll to pretty much 
recognize whenever an Xbox controller connects to the uh, Raspberry Pi and automatically starts our System D job. And I'm going to be going over System D here in a second. But if you're not sure what UDEV actually is, all it is is a device manager for the Linux operating system. And the best example I can come up with is whenever you plug a USB flash drive into your uh, Linux desktop, UDEV can recognize whenever you plug it in and automatically mount it without you needing to do anything with the actual flash drive. And it's pretty much just recognizing devices and seeing what is actually connecting to the Linux operating system. So you can see down here, uh, this is what I ended up calling mine. You can name this whatever you want. Um, but it's going to be inside of etc udev rules.d. I ended up naming mine um, 99 blackbriar.rules. Um, I just went with Blackbriar because I like Jason Bourne. But uh, you can name yours what you would like to your project. And you can see inside of this uh, 99 blackbriar rules. Uh, blackbriar.rolls is just checking for event zero to connect and once it does it will actually start our blackbriar.service once you actually do that you are going to need to reload the rules for udev down here and you can see the command to actually do that so it's just going to be sudo udev adm control dash dash reload dash rules and then that will actually be a new role inside of your uh, a new UDEV rule. <clears throat> now system D is just a task management system. It will start, stop, or restart uh, service. Pretty much anytime you have to restart, uh, like SSH for instance, you're just going to do like sudo system control space restart and then SSH. Um, you're using uh, system D whenever you do that. So we're just going to make our own job that is pretty much like a uh, program that can run in the background. And you can see how we're going to do that is it's going to be inside of the directory etc system d system and then you can name your job what you would like to but I named mine uh, blackbriar-monitor.service and you can actually see the contents of that file right down here. And to explain what we're doing here a little bit you can see that we're going to be running this bash script right down here once we start this service and so you know this bash script down here is just going to be running our python script and it's also going to be running it inside of a uh, while loop that way that it's also going to check for when we disconnect the controller so it'll automatically stop the job as well. Now once you actually create that system D job you're just gonna have to reload your daemon. So how we're actually gonna do that is a sudo system control daemon dash reload and we're also going to want to check our status of the uh, like in my instance the Blackbriar service and make sure that it's going to be off at this moment but we just want to make sure that it's actually inside of our system D as a job. And you're just going to be doing that with sudo system control status blackbriar dash monitor dot service. And that's pretty much it. So let's hop over into the terminal and check this thing out. Hey guys, I just wanted to show you a wiring diagram here of what we're actually dealing with. This is going to be inside of the GitHub if you are interested, but you can actually see where all the PWM signals are going to the actual HBridge controller and also the servo. And you can actually see the two buck converters up top. The bottom buck converter is actually the 7.2 volts for the servo and the uh, top buck converter is for the 5 volts uh, for the Raspberry Pi and also the HBridge controller. You can also see that we're going directly off the battery into the H bridge and that's actually going to be what's going to be powering the uh, DC motor too. All right, the first thing we're going to be going into is uh, UDEV uh, rules. You can actually see inside of here, inside of ETC UDEV rules that we have 99-blackbriar.rules. Uh, you can name this whatever you want to, uh, but you can also see that uh, we're starting a service called blackbriar.service and then you can see event zero and that's actually going to be our controller. Now your controller might be a different event but you're actually going to have to check that yourself and I'll actually show you how to do that here in a minute.
Now, once you create this role and you save it, you're going to want to do sudo udev adm control dash dash reload dash roles. And you can see here we're heading into system D, and this is where we're actually going to be making our blackbriar.service. You can see that's actually inside of etc system D system. And uh, you're just going to want to make a uh, whatever you want to call it dot service. And you can actually see up here, we're actually just running this bash script that's inside of my home directory. Now to actually enable this service, you're just gonna do a sudo system control daemon dash reload. And once you actually do that, you'll be able to do a sudo system control status and whatever the name of your service is. Mine in this case is Blackbriar. You can see it's disabled and also it is a service, yep. Now inside of dev input, now these are gonna be input devices that are connected to our Raspberry Pi. So you can see I actually already connected this with Bluetooth, so you will have to do that. Uh, if I do ls here, you can see now we have an event zero, and that's actually our controller. So that's what we're trying to do here is once blackbriar.roll sees that that controller is connected, it's going to start the blackbriar.service, and you can actually see it's done that. And then the blackbriar.service is going to be starting the blackbriar.sh uh, inside of my home directory. Yeah, you can see here bin system control start blackbriar dot service and with event zero um, that is going to be triggering that event. And you can see uh, it also stops the service once we're turn the controller back off. It actually uh, inactivates it. The reason I wanted to do this is that I can just connect the Xbox controller and then the RC car will work automatically and I'll have to connect to the terminal every time I want to do that. Now you can see inside of our blackbriar.sh inside of my home directory that we're making a variable that checks if event zero is connected and if that is true, then it's going to run this if statement. And when it runs this if statement, it's going to run the Python scripts that I've made, which is servo xbox.py and DC motor xbox.py. Then it's going to run a while loop while that statement is still true, which is uh, if event zero is still connected, it's going to continuously run this until it disconnects it doesn't see the event zero anymore inside of dev slash input and once that's the case then it's going to stop running the scripts and serv this is the servo xbox.py now if you want more detail on this i'm going to leave links in the description to a video of specifically how to control a uh, servo with an xbox controller with a raspberry pi and that also goes for the DC motor xbox.py. There is a video in the description to show you how to do this. I'm just skimming through it real quick. Now you see, whenever we connect it, like I said before, it's going to see that event zero is connected, start the blackbriar.service, and the blackbriar.service is going to start the blackbriar.sh in my home directory, and then the blackbriar.sh is going to start the Python uh, scripts, which is the servo xbox.py and the DC motor xbox.py. DC motor uh, xbox.py is going to be controlling the DC motor and the servo xbox.py is going to be controlling the servo. Now you can see it's actually pretty responsive, the Xbox controller I feel like uh, does a really good job with this because uh, just like whenever you're playing a video game you want to have uh, really quick response times uh, you don't want uh, latency uh, while you're using it to control a game and it works perfectly uh, within a reasonable distance of uh, bluetooth uh, for a rc car and you can see you got reverse you got forward you got right and left now there is a little bit of a twitch inside of the servo there are ways to get around it, um, but uh, it doesn't really affect the functionality of the RC car when you're driving it around, so I left it the way it was. Well, hey, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, like it. If you dislike the video, dislike it. And catch you next time. Peace.